this is the easiest season to get to Masters. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it and break down this full diamond game that took me into Masters. Now, the first thing, of course, is landing on the drop. And this was a pretty interesting one. We actually landed a turbine. I was duo queuing with Mythic, and this Mirage did decide to land turbine. They were the jump master. Now, ideally, I wouldn't land here. I'd prefer to land on the outer edge of the map, such as Hydro, Elysium, Orbital, somewhere like that that's usually quite quiet. I mean, sometimes even Gardens and Grow can be quite quiet. Most of the time, I've been going through ranked. I've been hitting Orbital, rotating up to Grow and Gardens, and through that way, usually the ring kind of ends around there, or you can go for Rift or something like that. But because we did end in Turbine, I kind of wanted to get in and out of here as fast as possible. Really, when landing, you should be avoiding contested drops, and you should also be avoiding the most popular areas, such as Energy Depot, Staging, Hammond Labs, and Turbine. Now, of course, we want to get in and out as soon as possible, but get the loot we're comfortable with. The aim is, if we're not getting early KP, we're trying to get a third mid-game and really kind of get in and grab some KP, and that's exactly what we do. We get our loot. By this point, there's only 11 squads left, and we hear some squads fighting, so we go and check it out. Now, we're not delving into here. We don't know exactly where the two squads are. We just have an idea that they're both fighting. We've heard some ults go off. We've heard some gunshots. And on this instance, it wasn't a fight worth taking. These guys have now stopped fighting since we've turned up, and they've kind of dispersed... And we think, well, there's no point taking this. We don't want to run in. Uh, we kind of want to reposition and just get to ring and get some good positioning. Now, I think this is the thing that people kind of forget about when playing ranked. They don't think about not taking fights. I think everyone's so focused on KP now that people are taking every single fight possible. And honestly, positioning now does matter. Your KP is capped. And getting position is what will really bring up your ranks. And I think that's why it's so e so much easier this season than previous seasons is you don't actually have to fly around getting KP all the time. Uh, you can kind of just get a bit of both. So at this point, we kind of just avoided that fight and carried on rotating around as we normally were. Now, this was a pretty good game. And by ring two, there was already eight squads left, which is kind of low, especially in some diamond lobbies. And the plan here is just waiting until the ring comes in. You know, we don't know where it's going. We don't know where to best position ourselves. And we've kind of got this spot at the top of Hammond, which again, I'm not a huge fan of, but it was our only kind of entry point into the map without having to do a full rotate. And it wasn't ideal, honestly. Um, this bang was just kind of right in the corner and uh, we get them taken out pretty fast. Now, the main thing here as well is being on communication with the team. Uh, the, the Mirage was a random third, like I said, uh, but he did come on mic because me, because me and Mythic were speaking in game chat. And I think if you are a solo queuer or a duo queuer, just giving comms and being in game chat rather than being in a party chat is way, way more beneficial. And it definitely needs to be done. Now, we do come into a fight as we're kind of rotating around. We want to pinwheel around down to the bottom of the map where we think less people are going to be uh, because we want to be taking the thirds. We don't want to be the squad that kind of gets thirded. But this fight, we kind of had to take. And the Mirage kind of run in as I backed out. So I kind of had to follow him in there. I don't want to leave my teammate getting 1v3'd. And this is kind of the thing. If your teammate pushes in, really, you should kind of follow them or you should kind of all pull out at the same time as well. Now, this did work out pretty well. That Mirage kind of distracted him enough that we could push in. Mythic dropped his ult. And as soon as you get one down in a fight, it's time to really push. It's time to really send it. That's when they're going to be at a weak point. They're going to be trying to get reses or, you know, they're going to be trying to heal, whatever it might be. And that's when you need to push. Now, watch what happens here. Because we've started fighting, a third immediately turns up. And I think this is a problem with Olympus. Still third party in is wild. Everyone's searching for KP. And Olympus, you hear gunshots miles away. So we don't get time to loot. Forget the loot. And we just get straight out of there as soon as possible. We want to reposition. Those guys are in ring. They can gatekeep us from the ring. And we need better positioning. It's all about positioning. You know, we've got 2kp. And we'll pick more up at the end. There is no worry about getting any more. Now, I think the thing I want to mention is, again... Right here, we're not taking the fight. We're focusing on position. We have the 2kp, but we notice there is a ton of squads around. And there's some holding the top up by Bonsai as well. And we kind of have to move in that direction. They're in the best spot. Uh, so although we kind of take a peek on fights, we don't always send it in. The thing I do want to mention, however, is Legend Comp. You've probably noticed this is a pretty weird one. Ideally, I wouldn't run Mirage and Ranked. I think there's way better Legends that you could be running. And if you really, really want 
to have the best composition possible, you're going to be talking GB, Valk, and Bloodhound. Or GB, Valk, and Octane. GB, Valk, Ash. A uh, GB is so, so important in ranked. Uh, I'm not very good with GB. I don't enjoy playing in the method of Mythic, so we kind of just went for Wraith and Fuse. I have been playing a bit of Horizon and a bit of Valk. Honestly, Valk is just insanely broken in ranked, and it kind of negates that whole thing of oh we need to think about rotations now if we get caught out we'll just ult and you pair that with a jimmy and you've got a bubble to then ult out of and cover to complete the reposition which is why she's extremely broken now jibbies will be a main target on most squads most people if they're playing together will say beam the jibby so if you do play jibby think about that but if you are playing Jibby, you need to kind of have a rotation legend with you. Now, although as much as I do like playing Valk and how easy she is, Wraith has always been solid for me. And her portals are just so, so useful as you'll see towards this end game. Now, as we fully position round into Icarus, because we're avoiding that team on the hill, again, focusing on positioning, not focusing on just trying to get as many kills as possible, because it is capped. It's capped at six. If you win the game, you're not going to get any more. It did, obviously, uncap last season, but it came back this season. So it's, again, the more focus on placement, which is why I think this season is, is, is probably one of the easiest. Now, we are kind of hit it in a bad spot here. We do need to push to ring, and there's two squads in front of us. So... We see this guy on the left who's pushed up. I think it was actually one squad looking back here now. But then we see this Jibby on the left trying to hold us. He launches his ult in. Mythic then ults him back. So he contains him. Fuse is actually pretty wild. If you want to check out some really good Fuse stuff, look at matching. He plays, he plays Fuse in uh, Pred gameplay, which I'm sure you know already. Anyway, we get the Jibby down. Jibby is the target. We want to finish him because obviously his bubble and his ult is kind of wild. I do actually think it could be two squads because there was another guy there. I'm not certain. I think it was two. Anyway, we get that JB finished because you want to be first in your kills in ranked. As you'll notice, I did that with the Revenant as well. You don't want to give people the chance to res their teammates. You want to put them at disadvantage as much as possible. A 3v2 is a lot easier than a 3v3. There's a lot less people to, to kill and obviously a lot less people shooting back at you. Now, we are trapped in this position and we do need to move. I kind of get this like weird jump that I didn't know existed in Olympus, but there's a team right there. We don't have a Jibby, we don't have a Valk. So this team on the right is the only thing stopping us. And again, to get in that, we're going to have to take this fight. Now, it is a 3v2, so we should have this. We just need to get the right angle because they do have Krabers. So it's important not to make that stupid decision and just get down. One of the teammates does actually take him down with the 30-30. So we push in on that immediately, not giving them chance to res. You can kind of hear the res going and we just get that cleaned up, which gives us some breathing room. Again, we're trying to only go for the kills we need to prioritize our position and getting the kills that are kind of blocking our way from getting the good position that we need. Now, I won't lie, this game did actually feel quite easy for a diamond lobby. I'm not sure what it was. This game just felt super, super easy. It was like my first game on for the day and uh, it was wild. I didn't even head in pubs, but it was wild. Now, obviously our priority here is getting into ring. This is where Wraith is going to come in super handy. Uh, again, just knowing your legends inside out and when to use their ults and abilities is super, super important. You'll see Mythic using his knuckles to suppress people and using his ults to suppress them and contain them or find out where they are, block their paths, all kind of little stuff like that that just really, really helps. Now, there's a team on the left and a couple teams on the right and we don't know where the last is. So I kind of like, look, I'm just going to go for it. We're just going to portal in. I think the good thing with the portal is obviously I can take it back if we need to and we can find another way in. I get it and we're, we're kind of up there. I see a, a guy up there and I just take the 1v1. Because it is the 1v1, it's a bit easier. Obviously, the thing you want to avoid in ranked is these 1v2s, these 1v3s, because as soon as you have more than one person focusing on you, you're just going to put yourself in a way, way more difficult position. Now, although I need to heal here, I also need to push. One of their teammates is extremely low, uh, but I have this ring coming in behind me, and I don't have a chance to heal. It's round five now, which is incredibly strong, and if I get in that, literally a couple takes, and I'll be dead. Now, my team do manage to finish that up for us, and they were plat players. I'm not sure why we had plat players in Diamond, but again, just now you'll see this end KP racking up so fast. We're in a pretty good spot here, and all we have to do is kind of wait for this end ring. And you'll see here there's this team just down on the right who's in an awful position. Uh, we secured a really good position by having this outer edge and some height where no one can kind of get behind us. No one can get to us without them seeing us. So we're kind of just playing the waiting game now. This guy 
is kind of stuck here because Mythic just keeps Knuckle Glistering him. And that's what I mean. Like, Fuse is, Fuse is okay, in my opinion. I think he has certain situations where he's very good at. And suppressing people and providing support on the team is one of those kind of situations. Now, they did have a Rift, so they did manage to portal out and actually get a better spot in the ring. We didn't kind of look at that. But they actually get a better spot because we didn't know where the where the, where the last uh, squad was. There was them and one more. We didn't actually know where they were. And it's kind of just with the last ring, if there's three squads, it's kind of just a waiting game to try and make the other two fight so you can get a third part. Because by the time the other two start fighting, they'll get uh, shields knocked off. They, you know, they'll be broken. They'll be, they'll be low on health, need to reload their weapons, whatever it might be. All the kind of stuff like that. Now, we do get Bang Outlet, so I immediately try to run to cover. I should have phased through that looking back, but again, just finding as much cover as possible. Now, without a Jibby, this is a kind of difficult ring. This is a horrible ring. There's not much cover. It's going to an area where in the center there is nothing, and it's just going to be like a pure chaotic fight. Now, this Wraith, who was ratting, is actually the third squad, and they just kind of appeared out of nowhere. They portal back. And I need to get this done. I do I do kind of almost die here. I need to get this cleaned up. My teammate comes in, saves the day. Mirage was on his own over there, which is unfortunate. You know, it's now either a 2v2 or a 2v3. So we want to get this down as best as possible. I knock out the shield swap. I don't really have time for the healing. Uh, we managed to get one down, which again, Mythic finishes. And we, you know, it completely changes the dynamic of the fight. And then there's only one left and he is not behind cover. Now, because we took those good positions, because we played the cover, that really enables us to get the win. I think, you know, people overlook positioning so much and just really focus on the kills. But your positioning and us just taking those longer rotations and focusing on finding cover in the last ring is really, really what got us the win. Now, like I say, don't focus solely on kills and you should be focusing on good positioning and finding good cover for end zones as well. If you want to know more Apex tips, please head over to my channel. I also did a solo to Masters Guys last season. Uh, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.